In truth, I was a weak-ass kid pretending I knew something about being a man. And let's be perfectly honest. I knew shit, probably even less than shit, whatever that may be, subtracted by 50. And that's proportionate to what I actually Gentlemen, knew let's about think life. About that sinking zilch. feeling of weakness we've all experienced when life is wrenched from our control. The death of a loved one. The loss of a job, the car won't start, last month's bill is due, and, oh yeah, the car won't start because it needs a new damn engine, damn it! We can't seem to win for all the bullshit losses, and it becomes hard. It's overly difficult to feel like much of a man when the tenacity of life throws cheap shots harder than Mike Tyson. And I believe that's a fair comparison. Who hasn't felt like they've been knocked off course due to an unforeseen blow, a hard punch to the gut? It's those situations that steal your breath, that smother your will to overcome. It's those moments when giving up seems a hell of a lot easier than confronting the difficulties. And surely you know what I'm talking about. Surely we've all encountered that devastating shot to our naive perception of how things should be in contrast to how they actually are. And upon first encountering the undue atrocities of life, those good old moments when life, God, Big Bang, the universe, jump from behind the bushes and shout, Gotcha, motherfucker. Well, it's easy and it's almost expected to pull out the big old fat victim card. And I've previously mastered the art of feeling sorry for myself. Hell, I was so good I could have fit in with these Nancy leftist crying oppression all the time. Here's my fucking victim card. Established upon my first breakup victim mode. And why was I feeling sorry for myself? Why was I choosing weakness over the opportunity to be strong? And the answer lies in this. Life is not fair and I should have never expected it to be. What had I been expecting? Let's seriously think about that. Hell man, that saying in one fashion or another has dropped on our ears all throughout our lives. Life's not fair. But for some reason, we come to believe that we are the exception, as if we hold the get-out-of-jail-free card. That the easy path is ours, and those other assholes in life, well, they can take the difficult path. But as for me, I carried that entitled mindset. Well, you should know I'm different. I'm special. And that's the very egotistical ignorance that destroyed much of my adult life. In truth, I was a weak-ass kid pretending I knew something about being a man. And let's be perfectly honest, I knew shit, probably even less than shit, whatever that may be, subtracted by 50, and that's proportionate to what I actually knew about life, fucking zilch. And so among all the kicks to the balls I've encountered over my life, it was a breakup that gave me that eye-opening perception of life isn't fair. I should never expect it to be, because while I was snotting and snobbing slobbery, naive emotions all over the damn dark room that I was apparently dying in, I came to the realization, man, that chick's out there living her best life, and I loved her. And as that train race circles through my thoughts, it's not fair, it's not fair, it's just not fair, hell, this isn't fucking fair, I begin to register how unfair life literally is. Shit, and horrible shit for all intents and purposes, happens every single day. To both the good, the bad, the deserving, and the undeserving alike. I recognized I'm not that special. I wasn't the exception in the sense that I'm invincible to life's harshness. Life's not fair, and I remember feeling a huge sense of relief. I didn't have to be freaking perfect anymore. Death could happen. My engine could blow up. That skank could leave me even though I'm perfect. And yeah, well, I was still egotistical and full of myself one step at a time, but I began to, I began to understand that life is difficult. It's ever-changing and fleeting. It's not this linear and unilateral process. There's billions of people with billions of decisions that impact even me. The guy decides to rob the bank, and while I'm getting ice cream across the street, his sporadic shooting at the police pursuing him strikes me in the neck, leaving me paralyzed. My girlfriend wakes up and decides, Life's short and she wants something different. And so she decides posting TikTok videos about feminism is the way to go. Good luck with that. But there's so much shit out of my hands. My control and to be so full of myself to think that I was or am the exception is the epitome of stupidity. It's the very definition of weakness if you ask me. 
And so as I've circled around what it means to be a man or to be a stoic or to be more resilient person, I've realized my ultimate duty is to remain strong amidst all the situations, to be attached to something or someone in a way that defines you as solely connected to them is a booby trap. It's going to always set you up for failure because, again, life's not fair and it's constantly changing. So write it on your forehead, tattoo it on your hand, plaster that shit across your car hood. But every day come to understand and realize life isn't fair and you shouldn't expect it to be. And again, this doesn't mean you become some cold-hearted asshole. Quite the contrary. You actually begin to respect and love life more because you expect the unexpected. You learn to appreciate what you have now for the temporary way you can possess it as it currently is. Knowing that all things come and all things go. The weak man will fall apart when things change because he's a slave to the life is fair mindset. The strong man knows that his duty is to remain strong during the course of trying times because it continues to prepare him for the realities of life. The harsh, unexpected things. People die. Relationships end. Engines blow up. And the weak fall to pieces, but the strong continue to live life. And not with a disapproving resentment, but with an appreciation for truth, wisdom, and the strength that enables them to endure the breakups, the losses, and the years when the imbeciles run the country. Hell, newsflash, that's every year, probably and most likely. But I choose to remain strong and composed. I'll date again, I'll vote again, I'll be ignorant again. <laughs> because I'm stronger than ignorance itself. Love and respect, you'll hear from me next episode.